Welcome to On La Nose. I am Lee, and I am here to talk with you, share some stuff. Uh, there's a bug on the ceiling, so um, just a moment. Okay, I'm back. I took care of that. <laughs> uh, living in an RV means living with bugs. And uh, like there's a, there's a line of ants in one of the window frames, very difficult area to... Uh, put bait. So I just, they're not going anywhere. They're just using it as part of their really out of the way freeway. So I'm like, okay, you guys aren't bothering me. You're not getting into stuff. I don't really have to see you. I'm going to let you stay there. But if it's a bug that I, you know, can see, and this one was actually like a moth, the kind that eat clothes. So I took care of that. Um, I just have to be careful how I take care of it because the ceiling has carpet. And the first time I dealt with the bug, I kind of forgot that. And now there's a spot. So, yeah. I haven't recorded for this podcast in quite a while. I don't know how long it's been. Um, I've done a couple of episodes that I recorded with other people, but it's been longer than that since I recorded on my own. And like a lot of things in my life have um, kind of shifted and moved forward since the last time I recorded. And I actually intentionally decided to kind of stop recording uh, while I was going through that because it was consuming me and it's all I could talk about. And as authentic as I want my podcast to be, um, I didn't, I just, I just needed to separate from my reality a little bit in the podcast so that I could talk about other things. Um, and it's, it's not an assumption that people aren't interested or whatever. It's, it's just that it wasn't the right shape for the podcast. You know, like I want to be able to share things that are happening in my life. But I also want to be able to talk about other things. And I felt like the space for talking about other things was like getting like smaller and smaller. And um, I just, I don't know, I just... I just wasn't happy with it. I started a YouTube series called RV Noob, N-E-W-B, and I've been posting about the RV stuff there in terms of like what I have been doing, um, what it's like, um, and that's been like a really great outlet. Uh, they don't get a lot of views, and, and that's fine because half of it is me having no idea what I'm doing or what's going on and playing the guessing game while I then go figure it out. And, you know, a bunch of the times I'm, I'm wrong and just don't understand until I learn more. So, um, you know, I mean, it's a kind of vulnerable content, so I'm okay with it, not making it out to the masses because the masses are not kind. And, um, I get enough negative responses to my clown stuff on YouTube. For some reason, it does really well on TikTok. And then on YouTube, I get like cringe, what the fuck, and other stuff that I don't really understand why people feel the need to put the negativity out there. But that's a thing. Um, and I don't like it. So I'm okay with not receiving too much attention. I think, I think my favorite... Favorite response I've gotten to an RV noob video has been somebody asking me if anyone's ever told me that I'm a um, hypochondriac. And I, I responded very literally to this and was just like, no, no one's ever said that. I've, you know, I've had some doctors that kind of told me stuff was in my head until I had the test done that verified that there were actually, you know, confirmed reasons for my symptoms. And then afterwards, I realized that he was probably asking that as a way to accuse me of being a hypochondriac. And of course, like, I didn't realize that I took it at face value. And then after the fact, it was kind of like, oh. And then some other people got mad at him about it, so I didn't have to. Um, and I'm very happy with how I responded. And I left my response that way um, because... Maybe he, you know, there's a small chance that he he actually was curious, but the fact that he never responded at all makes me think that that it wasn't a curiosity thing and more of an ac accusation. So 
there's this area of um, science that has been popping up in my feed and I find it like really exciting and interesting. And um, that's basically uh, where they're finding bacteria that can eat plastic. And then basically the excrement of the bacteria creates uh, new stuff that's useful. And um, there are a couple now that do this and create like polymers and stuff like that. And um, they're working on finding other ones. And so like, you know, we're, we're just now at the beginning of really uh, realizing how destructive and awful plastic is for us and for the environment. You know, like every time you wash clothing, if it's like synthetics or mixed materials or whatever, there's microplastics being rinsed out and put into the environment. And those microplastics are being, you know, pushed in, out into the ocean and up into the clouds and we're breathing them in and animals are absorbing them. And it's, it's, it's awful. It's we're you know, we're, we're not even seeing the ramifications of this exposure yet really, you know, but we will, and it's only going to get worse, you know, like over time, because we haven't been using plastic for really that long and it's already made that much of an impact. And as it breaks down and we're using more plastics, it's just going to get worse. And so the fact that there is this area of science that is going, well, we might have a solution, you know, to at least part of it. I think that's amazing and exciting and it's not a good reason to stop being cautious and careful and picky about what we use and, and our clothing and, and stuff. Um, you know, like I use wooden spoons. I don't buy plastic stuff for the, the kitchen. Almost all I have like glass storage containers and stuff like that. The, the one, the one exception is I have the OXO plastic bins with the pop tops. Um, but you know, even like my water bottles are used the recycled plastic and blah, blah, blah. And um, I don't think that we should stop being concerned or careful about that. But it makes me feel better to know that there is, you know, potential solutions. You know, I don't know how much of a cleanup job these can do. It may be something that it just mitigates future uh What's that word? You know, uh, spread. Um, there's a word. It's not spread. Uh, it's like contagious, but it's not contagious. Ooh. Anyway, it you know, it may be that we will stop the spread, um, but that the existing stuff that's in the environment is going to stay there because I, I can't imagine that they're going to be unleashing bacteria into the environment to, to be scrubbing the, the clouds or whatever, right? Because then, you know, then the bacteria would just be eating like our laptops and stuff. Um, but maybe like eventually we'll actually have like a real recycling system so that we're no longer, you know, uh, making things worse and you know these these plastic islands in the ocean can be broken down in a useful way and um I don't know so it's it's one of the things I get updates on and that I follow and I just I think it's fascinating and uh exciting and I will I will include a link to an article about it if I remember if I don't remember, remind me and I'll send it to you. And another thing that I've been thinking about that I wanted to share with you guys is, um, you know, like there's all these weight loss medications, the injectable ones that are super popular and there's like shortages of them. And um, that this is like a whole area that's developing like, I'm willing to bet that in the next few years, we're going to see more and more medications come out that are more specifically targeted for weight loss and um, probably even more effective, maybe hopefully without the side effects. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how the market adapts to that because 
right now um, weight loss, even though there's like such such a, like such a negative association with obesity and and the health impacts, it, weight loss is still seen as sort of like this unnecessary. Um, treatment thing like it's sort of like getting a mole removed on your face they say it's for aesthetics and so then like it's hard to get insurance companies to cover it um but they are getting more and more pressure to cover it more and more of them are covering it and i think that you know insurance companies in the long run are probably going to be saving money by you know covering these medications that basically will lessen um how long people live with certain health issues. Cause you know, like a lot of the health issues that are caused by obesity happen anyway. It's just that um, if you're not obese, they happen much later, like seventies or eighties um, if you live that long. But if you are obese, they happen much earlier, like forties and fifties, sixties, if you're lucky. Um, so, you know, they're going to have clients, customers, that are not going to need as much care until later. And, you know, I think that there's like a financial benefit there. But on the flip side, we're looking at like doctors and medical systems, medical organizations making less money because they're not going to be providing as much care. Um, or at least that's the concern. Like it's it's literally a, a topic of conversation. Should these drugs be covered by insurance should these drugs be supplied easily to people that need them and want them uh, because it could cut into the bottom line of the medical industry um, or the medical care industry also the food industry so you know there there are like these organizations that are watching what's going on and expressing concern and uh divisiveness divisive divisiveness I don't know if that's how it's spelled I know how it's spelled um around these medications because they're actually anticipating losing money you know um like junk food com companies and and food companies in general because the people that use these medications on average eat less so therefore they're going to be buying less um and it's fascinating to see it happening in real time where there's more of an open dialogue about it because a lot of times when there are shifts in industries around uh, people's health that could impact the bottom line, uh, the, the concerns and the lobbying and everything that these industries do to keep money coming in happens behind the scenes, you know, like the sugar industry, basically covering up, you know, the, the findings from studies that showed uh, the cardiovascular issues and inf inflammation and, and all of that, you know, they, they turned around and pointed at fat to be the issue when in actuality fat wasn't, wasn't the issue. Uh, they literally like tricked people so that they could keep making money and had people obsessed with eating like low fat diets, which isn't even necessarily happy. There's, there's like, there are bad fats and there's a such thing as too much fat, but unless you're, unless you're genetically predisposed to certain types of health issues that are caused by eating just normal, regular fats, for the most part, just, you know, it's not, it's not an issue. It's only if you have an excessive diet of where you don't, where you like eat, you know, bacon every single day, that kind of thing. But um, there are people who just can't eat like that kind of cholesterol whatsoever. And it's a genetic condition, basically. It's not, you know, just because of the food or whatever. But um, anyway, so there was a lot of misinformation for like decades around sugar and it's still kind of there. Like we know the sugar's bad. We know the sugar is addictive. Like there's been more conversation about that, but like the real impacts of sugar, the, the inflammation, the heart issues and the diabetes and all of this stuff, like it's, you know, it's still not, it's still kind of in the shadows a little bit. 
Um, and the the lies and the lobbying and stuff, that's still kind of in the shadows a little bit. But um, these these companies and organizations that are talking about these weight loss medications, you know, I don't, it, it could be that this stuff is on the DL more than I realize. And it's just the way that, the way that my feed is, the information I'm getting, it's, I'm just getting that information. Maybe other people aren't privy to it. I'm not, I don't know. Now, it's part of why I'm sharing it is because there's a possibility you haven't heard about it. You know, companies like Nestle are looking at potentially pivoting so that they are not just offering the junk food options, but also offering um, like health food options, things that help build lean muscle and whatnot to basically be complementary to... um, to these medications, because one of the things that one of the side effects of uh, the injectable weight loss medications is a loss of of lean muscle. So you know you, you gotta you gotta make sure that you're you have a good high protein diet and stuff like that. So you know they're talking about like supplements that people could take and getting into that where they can make money um, and shifting shifting gears, which that to me seems better, healthier than trying to lobby, you know, and be like, don't cover these medications. We can't, we, you know, we can't let people lose weight. We don't want to change their diets and stuff. And, and uh, I'm sure that there are actually organizations out there doing that right now. Um, I haven't read about them I've just read about conversations that these companies have had where they're expressing like concern about the future of their income. If people start eating less and they start eating healthier Um, and the concern around, you know, medical organizations or organizations that offer medical care, losing money because they're not providing as much, uh, as much healthcare. But let's be real. People need health care whether or not they're overweight. They just they'll just they'll just be able to focus on the other things, the things that are often ignored and downplayed when you are overweight. I mean, so many people that are obese have health issues that have absolutely nothing to do with their weight. Was not caused by it, is not like, you know, uh exacerbated by it or anything it's it's a secondary thing that has nothing to do with that and they can't get care for it they can't get testing for it they can't get physical therapy for it or any real acknowledgement because the doctors only see the fat so from my perspective if people who want to lose weight because that is a choice people don't have to lose weight they don't have to want to lose weight uh if people want to lose weight and successfully do so, then those that have health issues will have a greater opportunity to get the health care that they couldn't have gotten otherwise. You know, and people always have things. Plus, like, with how fucked up our environment is with the plastic and all the other shit, I, people are just going to get sicker. You know, it's I not to be a negative Nancy, but like, you know, there's just there's just gonna be more more cancer more stuff more like stuff so I I don't think that there's ever gonna be like an end to the need for medical care will what is being provided shift to different things potentially there could be less heart disease there still be heart disease because there's people that get that whether or not they're obese and heart disease becomes more and more common the longer we live. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, but it's, it's very interesting to me to, to be reading about these companies who are thinking about their future income, future losses, you know, and think about how many of these companies, um, over the years have, pushed for the wrong thing, the thing that was wrong for us, the thing that was not good for our health, because 
it benefited their bottom line for us to eat the thing or to consume the thing or whatever, you know, like, like I talked about, um, not here, but on RV Noob, I talked about air quality issues associated with certain cleaning supplies, you know, and these cleaning supplies are known to cause issues and cause inflammation in the lungs and stuff like that and create like crazy amounts of air pollution. And even though that is like known, there's there's very little like information actually put out into the the population about it and and the warnings on on the the bottles are kind of like they almost sound like if you snort this stuff it'll fuck you up but but the warnings are actually symbolic or meant to represent a a larger larger warning it's just not being worded in a way that can be comprehended for what it actually means it's very like neurotypically worded um, and, you know, like Fabuloso is a good example of a product that people should not be using, uh, in their houses. It's like an industrial strength cleaner. It's noxious. It, it causes all kinds of like inflammation, irritation and stuff when used and it creates a ton of air pollution. And, you know, these companies do not put that information out there. They have the information. They do the studies. They pay for the studies, and then they don't put the information out there. And, you know, a lot of the products that are the least, that have the least amount of transparency are marketed to the lowest income brackets. Um. And there's a pattern there that's undeniable, you know, and the people that are in low, low income brackets are less likely to be educated enough to be able to dig into and look into like the real information. They're less likely to be able to afford the stuff that doesn't cause these issues that works just as well you know, or better than what they, they have access to. And, um, and just to back up, I'm not saying that like low income people are dumb or whatever. It's, it's literally like an education thing and not like school education. It's, it's when you're poor, your brain gets used for surviving in ways that don't often afford the opportunity to question things you know, to be a critical thinker um, in certain ways. And so a lot of people just don't have the bandwidth to really question things. And, you know, you get, you get used to what's normal and well, that's what, that's what my family uses or whatever, you know, that's, that's what I, that's what I meant by that. Um, And I think it's, I just think it's fucked up. You know, it's like we're poisoning, we're poisoning, you know, an entire layer, entire level of humanity uh, in multiple ways between like, you know, what's available and affordable food wise, since, you know, foods with subsidized materials are more affordable to poor people than the non-subsidized stuff, which is real stuff which is insane it's 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 fucking insane to me that you know um this this food that is made from enriched blah 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 and it's not really real food is cheaper even though it like took all this work to make it uh then you know some like lettuce and eggs and stuff like I just it's our system is crazy the world we live in is is crazy and it's because everything revolves around greed and revolves around the people who benefit from being greedy you know like it's like this aspect of our our evolution has just gone horrifically wrong in this way that like 
instead of being greedy in a way that benefits the species, it's only benefiting the few. And we're just letting it run amok. And, and they're just, they're just destroying the planet, you know? And I'm sure some of these fuckers probably have like bunkers and plans in place for, well, if it gets really bad, I can blah, 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 you know? Uh, but, you know, only caring about themselves and their, their immediate future and their immediate survival. Um, you know, like in our lifetimes, and in the next decade, the next two decades, we're going to be watching people fighting over, over property and land uh, because, you know, we're going to be losing habitable, habitable land along the coastlines and like in the, the inlands and stuff. And the rich people, the people with the money are going to be sure that they buy up the stuff that's survivable that's going to be less impacted, you know, and there, everyone else is is kind of going to be left to fend for themselves uh, living in environments that are impacted by weather that's going to continue to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's already happening. It's just it's going to be happening in a way that will be undeniable soon. And... um yeah, it's, I, you know, I don't know. When I was a teenager, I thought that things were falling apart. And I thought they were falling apart quickly. They are falling apart, but they're falling apart in slow fucking emotion. Like, you know, we're, we're going to watch it in slow motion with looks of horror and dismay, slowly, you know, just locking in on our faces. Um, it's very disappointing. You know, it's not, it's not, it would not be ideal to go through like the system imploding and then having to rebuild something else. But it, it yeah, it, that's the only way anything's going to get better. You know, we, we live in a country where the government is built by a bunch of dudes who cared about themselves and who didn't want to follow the rules of the country that they lived in because they, they didn't like giving up their money, right? And everybody like romanticizes like what this country is about, but it's like bullshit. It's, it's a fucking bobblehead idea to distract people from what the government you know, is really, and what the culture is really like built around, which is that super small percentage of people who hold all the power, you know? I mean, even like the corporations, there, there's not that many actually holding, you know, the power. There, there's very few holding a lot of the power. And then, and then those are broken up into like hundreds of other corporations. So they look like there's a whole bunch of different corporations that are all like, you know, um, running the economy and providing products for the economy. But in actuality, you know, these hundreds and thousands of, of corporations for the most part are owned by the same like one, two, three organizations, you know, and it's, it's all distraction, smoke and mirrors and, you know, just keeping us unaware, you know, it's why, it's why I don't put a lot of like importance on, on elections. And, you know, if you vote and it makes you feel better to vote, awesome. Um, I vote sometimes if it's something that I really like agree with or disagree with. I don't always vote if I don't know enough about something or I don't care about something. I don't vote on that. But um, I also don't think that my vote really matters. I think that the government is a machine that is shaped a certain way. And I think that most of what we see in terms of politics are things that don't actually have very much impact on that machine. 
they are predominantly distractions to keep us from seeing the machine itself, from seeing the trap that we live in. Um, and it's part of it's part of the distraction to tell us that voting is how we participate in a system that literally does not change very much when we vote, you know? Um, like the, all the greed and, and, and the poor allocation of funds and the subsidies and all of these things that help people stay rich, none of that changes. We're never voting on the things that would really make our lives better. It's, it's, yeah. So that's something that I think about on a pretty regular basis. I, I can remember distinctly the first time I realized that we lived in a trap. Um, because I, I, was a kid and all I wanted was to have my own property and kind of be away from people and be self-sufficient and not have to participate in society because I, I, at a very young age, was not a fan, you know? And it's not that farming is fun or exciting, but it seemed preferable to working in an office and having somebody tell me what to do and having to pay rent and, and all of this shit, you know? And, um, and my parents were like, okay, but how are you going to pay your property taxes? And I was like, what do you mean? And it was like, I found out when you own property, you still have to pay into the system, you know? And then I like lost my shit. I, I spent like a good week or two just angsty and rageful because I realized that even if I got my own property and did my own thing, I would still have to participate in the, the economy in order to pay the property taxes. Like, there's no, there's no escaping the system. You know, I mean, I guess unless you're like a church or something, but that's not, I don't think that should be a thing. I think that's a weird failure of separation of church and state right there that that churches get tax exempt status. That's, that's weird. But um, I would never be able to claim to be a church anyways, because it's, it's lying and I don't, I can't do that. It's so hard. Um, yeah. So that's kind of where my brain has been when I'm not, just trying to survive with my recent life changes, you know, is thinking about that stuff. And I guess, you know, it's hard not to think about it when you've been unhoused and you're kind of like in this environment of limbo um, because it, it does change the perspective of where you're sitting and it, it changes what you can see. And um, I'm not seeing anything new but it has brought it all up in my mind again. And yeah, so I have been saving articles. I, I don't know if I mentioned before, but I used to have like 50 articles and I have like a whole list of stuff written out that I want to talk about and I lost them and it, it was just like, oh, and lost my direction. Um, so I've started saving articles again and... Um, the thing about my brain is I can only talk about what I'm excited to talk about. So I'm probably only going to get to some of the articles. I'm not going to get to them in the order I was expecting. And when I sit down to talk, it's probably not going to be about what I thought it was going to be about. Right. Um, but I will get to most of them eventually. And um, that's, you know, that's what, what I'm excited to do is to share the stuff I've been learning about and, and what I think about it, you know, I, um, just brain farted. Oh yeah. I remember now I am planning to do like, um, 
a segment for the podcast that is patron only. So you have to sign up for my Patreon to get access to it. And uh, basically, I'm going to be recording the book that I started writing um, to help me edit it because reading out loud makes it easier. I just, I don't, my brain like fills in the gaps if I'm reading, but if I read it out loud, I go, oh, that's, there's a mistake there and there's, you know, oh, I forgot this. And so I'm going to be working on that. And if you would like to hear that or be privy to that, you can get access to it uh, by signing up for my Patreon at the $10 level or higher. And um, I also post my podcast there and I post Frightening Fron there. Um, and so if you get ads on Spotify or you get ads on YouTube, um, that is a, another way for you to get to listen without ads. Uh, because even if I do get to the point that I start to monetize, I will put an ad-free version on Patreon. So, yeah, and and always, 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 always thank you to my existing patrons, especially because I have been so distracted and so consumed with my living situation and this just crazy uphill, upheaval in my lifestyle. It's been, it's been a lot and it's been really hard. And my patrons have stuck with me and continue to support me, even though I haven't been producing as much art. And um, maybe that's because they consider content creation productive. I don't know. But, you know, whatever it is, I really, really appreciate them and the support. And on my days when the imposter syndrome is just eating holes in me. I am like, dude, there's like a group of people literally investing in me. Like, come on, come on. You know, you're worth at least that. So, you know, you can't be that bad. Um, and yeah, I appreciate that. So anyway, it's nice to be recording again. I know for you guys, you just heard from me last week, but it's literally been like, at least two months since I've recorded like this. So it feels like it's been a really long time for me. And um, I hope that this finds all of you well. Thank you for listening and spending time with me. And I will talk to you again next week.